Let's now look at a practical example of survey sampling. And we're going to do question five from the Applying the Concepts set. Having a quick read, state park officials are interested in the proportion of campers who consider the campsite spacing adequate. Okay, so we have a random sample of 30, so it says 30 there, from a total population of 300 camping parties visiting the campground. Okay, so here we have 30 people or 30 parties that were sampled. 25 of them said that yes, they were satisfied with the amenities of the campground or they thought the campsite was adequate. So our question is, we're going to try to um, use the data to estimate P, the proportion of campers who consider the campsite spacing adequate. So we only have a sample of 30, so we have a value of P hat. And that's going to become our estimate for P, the true population proportion. And we're also asked to find uh, the bound on the error of estimation, which is given by this, two times the standard error. So we're concerning ourselves with how confident we are with our estimate for P that we call P hat. Okay, so hopefully you can uh, open up that in your own browser so you can have a look while we uh, look at the answer here that I've prepared. So first step, let's find out what our estimate for P is. We know that 25 out of 30 people were satisfied. So straight away at the top here, we know that P hat is 0.83 repeater or 5 sixths. Now, how confident are we about that estimate? Of course, that came from just 30 parties out of 300. So we've got to try to figure out how confident we are. What's the variance that associates with 0.83 repeater? And that's where this next formula comes in. Uh, we saw it on the previous little video that I put up. It's also in your lecture notes. So when you're dealing with a binomial distribution or a Bernoulli distribution, as in fact we have here, because um, you're either satisfied or not satisfied with the camping grounds, um, it's going to be P, Q on N, which will be the variance of P hat. Now, we don't actually have P or Q. Okay, I'm saying Q is 1 minus P. We have the sample proportion, so it's P hat and Q hat. Now, it's getting a little bit tricky here, but that's going to be divided by N minus 1, as we have here, not just N. But that aside, this is still what we're used to seeing when we calculate the variance of that estimator, P hat. We usually do P hat, Q hat on N minus 1. This time, because it's finite sampling, we're sampling from a finite population, we've got to include this factor as, again, capital N minus little n over capital N. So calculating that, we'll move on to the next line. You can see that we get a variance of P hat of 0 0.00431. So we can count, calculate then the standard deviation, which is just uh, the square root of that, so 0 0.0656. So you can see how I've filled in everything here, and then uh, I've got the standard deviation of p hat, and finally we've got the uh, bound on the error of estimation, which is two times the standard error. So 0 0.1313 is our bound. So if we're trying to figure out how confident we are about this 0 0.83 repeater business, well, it can go up or down 0 0.1313. That gives us that sort of, it's almost like a confidence interval. In fact, it's very, very close to what we call a 95% confidence interval. But that's the bound on our estimation, 0.83 repeater. We now have a bound on that. And that answers question A. So let's have a look at question B. What does that give us? Determine the sample size required to estimate P with a bound on the error of estimation of magnitude 0.05. So, we found the bound in the previous example. What was it? It was 0.1313. Okay. Oh, excuse me. Where'd it go? Sorry, my other windows. Um, so in this case, um, we're after a magnitude of 0.05. So it's a case of using that previous example and just doing it in reverse. So let's have a look. It's the same question, essentially. It's just we're given different pieces of information. In part A, we were given little n, we knew there were 30 
um, people in the sample, 30 parties in the sample. Here, we're given the bound on the error and asked to find what little n would have to be. So let's have a look. Let's scroll down. So here, we, we know that the bound is given to us at 0 0.05. So let's, we're going in reverse now. The standard error is obviously half of that, 0 0.025. You can find the variance of p hat then, which is going to be that squared. So we've got this. So we now know the variance, which is given by this formula. We used it in the previous example. Here's that big formula again. So we're going to use this in reverse to try to find little n. Now, if you want to try your algebra skills, I'd pause the video here and uh, give it a crack. Um, but if you want me to do it for you, you can just keep on watching. Um, but look, this is basic algebra that you should be able to do by yourself, I would suggest. So we've got big N. We know that's still 300. P hat is 0.83 repeater. 1 minus P hat is 0.16 repeater. And so we're literally going to just rearrange this equation to try to find, rearrange this equation to try to find little n. So let's do that. I'll just scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. Rearrange that to find little n, and we find that n is equal to 128.23. So I've just basically calculated all those, you know, made it a little bit simpler for you. And then n equals 128.23. Now, if you're really keen, well, you've got a, you might have a particular question here about how we know p hat. We've got a new sample here of 128 observations. How are we to know that p hat is still 0.83 repeater? It's an interesting question, and that's one of our assumptions we've had to use here. We have to assume that p hat remains the same for this new sample that we're about to take. So perhaps something that's a bit loose about this uh, answer I've given here, but look, we couldn't do it otherwise, so if p hat was the same, n would need to be 128. Or you'd have to say 129 to get the bound at least down to 0.05. Okay, final question. This is a good one. Okay, afterwards it was discovered that people who had answered don't know had been coded as one, implying they thought it was adequate. So there were 10 people in this category. So instead of having 25 people, so here it says 25, instead of having 25, we know that only 15 thought that was adequate. 10 of those said they don't know. So let's scroll down, see what that implies. So if you read the question, it says to estimate the population numbers in each category and their standard errors. I'm gonna do that in a second. Let's first do what we did in the previous question. Let's find the proportions, that's easy enough, 15 on 30. So 50% of people we would predict would be in the yes category. Okay, five on 30, so that's a sixth would be in the no category and a third would be in the don't know category. That's our estimate for the population proportions in each category. Now here we've got the variance of that. So how confident are we about this 0 0.5? The 0 0.5 here, the 0 0.16. How confident are we about that? Well, let's find the variance. Same process as the previous question. I'm not gonna go through that step by step, but you can see the formula there, and here is the variance each time. We take the square root of that and we have the standard deviation. So again, this gives us some indication of how confident we were about those values, those proportions, 0 0.5, 0 0.16, and 0 0.33. These standard errors, standard deviations over here, an indication of how confident we are. And we can times that by two and make it that bound of error like that previous example. Sure, we could do all that stuff. But the question's not asking us about proportions. It's asking us about the number of observations in each category. So you know that 15 out of 30 people said yes, they thought it was adequate. Now, if there were 300 people in your population how many people would you predict would say yes out of 300? Okay, that's a fairly simple question and you wouldn't even blink. You'd say, well, it's 150, right? Well, you'd be quite correct. You're essentially timesing it, multiplying it by capital N. So here we have the total number out of 300 we would expect in each category. Again, very intuitive. You take the sample proportion, 
So that's p hat. We times it by capital M, times it by 300, and we get the number of expected people in each category. So how confident are we about these numbers, 150, 50, and 100? Well, let's consider the variance of each of these. Now, we're trying to find the variance of NP or NP hat. Appreciate, and you should remember this from your you know, studies in Econometrics 1010 or your first year econometric studies, N squared can come out the front. It's just a constant. So we have N squared times the variance of P hat. So in all these formulae, I've got N squared out the front times the variance of the proportion which we got in the previous table. If you can, I'll scroll back up. Here was the variance of our proportion, 0 0.007759. Now we have the variance of the number of people in that category. So you can consider the variance of the proportion, which was 0.5, or the variance of the number, which is 150. And the difference is that we times it by 300 squared. So here is the variance, 698 is our variance of the number of people that said yes in the population. The standard deviation is the square root of that, simple enough. And you can do that again with no and don't know. So we'll have the standard deviation written there. There we go. Those are those standard deviations for each category. In particular, the number of people you would expect in each category. So that represents some kind of confidence that we have about our numbers in each category. So here we have, okay, 50 people in the no category. We would expect 50 people in the no category, but our standard error associated with that is 19.69. So perhaps we're not so confident as we might think about that particular value. That's the hard stuff done. You can calculate the bound on the error here, the bound on the estimate. You just times the standard error by two and put it each way. So I've, I'll, I'll leave that bit to you, but that's the tough stuff out of the way. And that's sim a similar thing happens in question six. So you can now try question six using the same idea as this. Anyway, I hope that's been helpful and I hope that solved some of your problems with this particular tutorial. I'll catch you in class.